welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this uh, lecture we want to solve one very important type of question which has been asked in CSI net exam almost every single year and that question is about the peptide sequencing as well as the nucleotide sequencing questions now these questions are asked in unit number one and the question is all about they will give you a polypeptide sequence or they will give you a nucleotide sequence either RNA or DNA sequence and then they will ask you that there are specific enzymes okay uh, let's say in case of protein it's protease in case of RNA it's ribonuclease and they will ask you how many number of fragments uh, can be generated after treating that polypeptide or DNA or RNA into different fragments that's the type of question that they will ask so they just uh, tell you the names for example uh, for this uh, work of polypeptide sequences they can ask you a question like if we treat this polypeptide with either trypsin pepsin protease v8 or cyanogen bromide or let's say chymotrypsin so what are the fragments that uh, this peptide is going to generate how many number of fragments that this peptide is going to generate they sometimes can also ask you question right uh, by by giving you pictures means you know the SDS page where there are different fragments so by knowing the number of fragments can be generated after this treatment you need to find that answer in that picture so either way the question is the same the same question repeats for nucleotide sequences here in this sequence they have asked that uh, if this is the nucleotide sequence RNA sequence then uh, pancreatic ribonuclease ribonuclease T2 or ribonuclease T1 where exactly they are going to cut that's the question so let's first solve the question with this polypeptide sequence in this polypeptide sequence to understand uh, how to answer it it's quite very easy because you only need to know the rule the rule means where exactly trypsin cuts where exactly pepsin cuts where exactly protease v8 cuts so the rules if once you know you can answer it very easily and another thing that you need you are going to need while answering this question is uh, to know the single letter code of amino acids because you know they are always going to give you question with single letter code they will not give you three letter code because it's easy to depict so you need to know which is which amino acid by looking at the single letter code so once you understand that part clearly then what we uh, will say here is all of this has certain rules and the rules for trypsin, pepsin, protease V8 and cyanogen bromides are let's say trypsin. Trypsin cleaves at C terminal C terminal side of lysine and arginine not histidine lysine and arginine but one exception though if lysine is followed by proline or arginine is followed by proline because proline has a bulkier ring that will prevent the trypsin's work pepsin cuts in terminal side of aromatic amino acid in terminal side of aromatic amino acid and the example of aromatic amino acid phenylalanine tyrosine tryptophan isn't it now the same way chymotrypsin also cleaves this aromatic amino acid but at the C terminal site of aromatic so pepsin cleaves at the N terminal site of aromatic amino acids while chymotrypsin cleaves at the C terminal site of aromatic amino acid protease V8 cleaves the C terminal site of acidic amino acid Acidic amino acid means glutamic acid, aspartic acid, isn't it? Right? And cyanogen bromide cuts C terminal site of methionine, only methionine amino acid. So these are the rules. So when I say N terminal site or C terminal site, it means you know if you look at a protein sequence, they'll always tell you N terminal and a C terminal okay so n and c terminal so you can easily understand now if it cleaves an n terminal the fragments will be different if it cleaves a c terminal the flag fragments will be different so it is really really important be careful about it some people just uh, look after the name of the amino acids but you need to focus on the n or c terminal as well so let's let's answer it first of all trypsin 
cleave C terminal site of lysine and arginine. Now, if you look at this, this whole polypeptide sequence, there is the lysine here, AL, there is the lysine uh, at this point. So, if you look at here, C terminal site of lysine means after lysine it will cleave, right? C terminal site of lysine. So, it will generate two fragments, two fragments will be generated. Pepsin, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, aromatic amino acid, N terminal side of them. So, if we look at in this picture, there are uh, Y and there is W, right? So, these are the aromatic amino acid Y and W, no other amino acids are there. So, N terminal side of which, so N terminal side of Y cleaves here, N terminal side of W cleaves here. So, how many fragments? Total two cut, three fragments will be generated. Protease V8, C terminal site of acidic amino acid. So, C the terminal site of acidic amino acid, if you look, what are the acidic amino acid here? E and D. So, this is D. Let me erase the earlier one. So, here we have the D and we have a E as well. C terminal side of them, so here and here, how many fragments generated? Three. Two cuts, three fragments generated. Cyanogen bromide, C terminal side of methionine. And if you look at thoroughly, there is only one methionine. So C terminal side of methionine means here, number of fragments generated, two. Cut, one. So you know, the number of cut is one less. Number of fragments, obviously, is one more. So this is the idea, okay? Now, they can repeat this type of questions with, uh, let's say, the antibody, you know, the different structures of immunoglobulins. They will tell you like pepsin, papain, different proteases are involved, what kind of cuts are generated. They can ask questions like that. So, this in a sense is overall peptide sequencing process, including the most important uh, enzymes that are involved, proteases that are involved. Now, the second part is regarding the nucleotide sequencing. And in this case, we have three uh, enzymes here, one is pancreatic ribonuclease, ribonuclease T2, ribonuclease T1. Now again, you need to know the rules to answer them. So what is the rule? Rule number one, if you look at the pancreatic ribonuclease and the rule for them is that they always cleave, they always cut after pyrimidine. Okay. Then Ribonuclease T2 and ribonuclease T1. Ribonuclease T2 cleaves after and after means obviously uh, we are talking about after the cleavage it will generate 3 prime end. Okay. So it will cleave after A and ribonuclease T1 cleaves after what? G. And all this cleavage we are talking about is a 3 prime cleavage, remember, it's all 3 prime cleavage, not in the 5 prime, to the 3 prime of pyrimidine, to the 3 prime of adenine, to the 3 prime of guan. So they can ask you a question with independent single nucleotide or protein uh, uh, enzymes or ribonuclease or they can tell you that if we combine all of it together, then how many number of fragments generated. By any means, the question can come. Another way, the question can be a little difficult, and that is if they give you the fragmented part, if they give you the fragmented sequence first, and then ask you uh, to find out the actual peptide sequence or actual nucleotide sequence. That will be really interesting, because in that case, you need to know the number of fragments and the enzymes that they actually used, and they need to think about where exactly the enzyme can cut and based on that idea you need to superimpose all the fragments to get a total length of the polypeptide or nucleotide sequence right so that's all about the peptide sequencing math problems so keep on solving math problems regarding and like this so that you can answer this question in the exam if you like this video you should subscribe to my channel share this video as much as you can and also tell us tell other people about us so that they also find our video uh, helpful for their preparation. Thank you.